Hey everyone, this is a very quick video because the year is over now, so it's time to move on to some 2024 figures. This is the R2-D2 that released to celebrate the return of the Jedi run this past year. I covered the release of that Darth Vader from that wave, who I was surprised with, but I felt that the functionality was a little off. Be sure to check that video out after this one. I bought the Archive C-3PO this year for, I think, like 20 bucks, because I figured that it would be a lot easier to find an R2 in the wild than another 3PO. Now I finally have the two together. So this R2-D2 figure really caught my eye because I can see that there's all these really fun accessories here included, so he appears to be quite dynamic, but I also heard that he also is the best scaled version of the character that the series has ever had to date. He also features a really cool secret compartment where you can stow away all of his accessories, and that really intrigued me. As much as I love accessories on figures, what I love even more is a really nice way to store them with the figure. So the packaging is a really nice window display here that the people seem to go crazy for. It's that traditional style of card back dating back to the 80s toys. I I like the box design, but what I like more than that is what's inside, so let's get this thing open already. R2 here stands with all of those neat extras. There are six added parts to attach onto him, really cool pieces like different antennae, different tools and instruments, and something that kind of looks like a gun, but I'm assuming it's maybe like an oil canister or something. I'll show all that off in a sec. The Ahsoka release of Chopper this year was my first experience with a Black Series droid figure, so I have a new soft spot for these types of toys. He's a solid plastic dome build with some really nice colors and details on the front, back, and his side. R2 is as articulated as one could hope for an R2-D2 toy. I had a couple of these as a kid, but none of them as good as this. And R2 to me is the most recognizable silhouette from Star Wars, so it's actually really great to have this for the collection. His articulation is pretty funny compared to everything else that I've covered on this channel. He can fully rotate his head all the way around, nice to see. He can also rotate his legs all the way around, but there are no bends for in and out movements. He's got his third leg here for balance at the bottom, which has a very slight bend in the foot area for some movement. This leg can be a adjusted to however you see fit, and his feet have the same movements on each side as well. That's it for all of his articulation, he's a very easy figure to cover. As mentioned, the accessories are the real highlight for this guy. First he's got these extra arms that come out of the front of his body, which can move out with some care. They're placed on some bends here, but it just feels like I'm really damaging him by doing that, so I'd rather just leave them as they are. And I'm using a scalpel knife to open up the slots on his torso. You can see that the inside here contains three different ports, a top, a middle, and a bottom one for the extras to be added into. I'm not sure if there's a really right way to be doing this, I just thought that I would add these inside to show you how to apply them. It looks really fun and I genuinely love that inclusion. And the other two extras that were added go at the top of his head, using that same scalpel to remove these tiles here nice and carefully so that we can slot in the remaining extras. He looks great overall, I really do love the design here, but I won't be displaying him like this because I think the storage section is much better. It's a genuine highlight for me here. Removing these top sections here, you can lift his head all the way up and inside is a little rotating shelf with some gaps for extras. You do definitely want to make sure that they are fully plugged in though before you decide to close him up. You want to make sure that you can hear them click, and I'll show you why in a second. While I was filming this, I didn't fully push in this antennae piece, and I thought that it would be fine. No big deal. I put the head down and I started rotating, and then once I was trying to get it back open, the antenna piece was gone. It was lodged underneath the head, jammed in between there and the body. I was able to get everything out, no real damage to the toy and accessories, it just took a little bit longer than expected. You can see that some of the material there does rub off on my fingers because it's been jammed between bits of plastic. I had to jab at it with a knife, so lesson learned here, make sure you can hear it actually click when you equip it in the slots. But amazingly, they do all fit, even this piece with the tile at the top, which I was sure it wouldn't be able to fit inside because it's such a thick part compared to the others. I haven't tested to see if those tiles at the top of his head here can be placed in this section. After that antennae incident, I'm not really sure I want to try this out though. I'm amazed that you can even rotate the head inside with everything slotted in. It's a real feat for figure accessories in my eyes. R2-D2 looks great and I'm really satisfied with this figure overall. He looks really good on display with all of my other figures, and I don't really know what else to say. He looks amazing. If you enjoyed this review of a Star Wars The Black Series figure, subscribing to this channel does help to support making more videos like this. Take care.